Hey guys, this is Nick from Durantel Sales and Service here in St. Peter, Minnesota. We're an Alumacraft dealer. Today we're going to walk through the features, the functions uh, of this competitor 175 FSX. This is a 2024 model. Uh, this is a sold boat, so it's got electronics, trolling motor, and a bunch of extras on it. So we'll kind of show how this boat was set up for this customer. And uh, if you have any questions, you can ask in the comments. Um, but yeah, we'll kind of start at the front, work our way back. Again, this is a 2024 competitor FSX. What that means is it has the normal competitor function and layout with the addition of the jump seats in the rear of the boat. So on the outside, we've got um, all of our boats come with Shorelander trailers. You can do either roller, which is what is under this boat, or you can do a bunk option. There's options for a standard trailer, there's a custom trailer. Depending on the boat and the customer wants, we do all different types of those. So uh, they all come with a swing tongue, they all have a spare tire, uh, they all have the textured powder coated finish. Uh, there is options for galvanized, um, but this is the, the most popular trailer option for us. Um, again, this is the 175 model. They make this FSX platform in a 185 as well. Um, colors, graphics, there's all sorts of different options. Again, this is one of the more popular ones. This is a silver, black, silver. Uh, there is three different hull colors. There's a silver, like this is. There's red, and then there's also black. Each hull color has a different accent color. Um, so yeah, like I said, this is the by far the most popular, um, but there is, I believe, eight different combinations available. So uh, this customer decided to add the Shorelander guide bumps. Uh, these are an option on the standard trailer. Some of the trailers, the custom series, will have the tall guide posts, uh, but this particular one didn't have anything. He wanted something that was a little bit sturdier that could help him guide the boat on in a shallow water situation or in um, loading by themselves. So at the back of the boat, we have got Suzuki power. We can power these boats with either Suzuki's, Yamaha's or Mercury's. Um, this has got the 140 Suzuki, which is an awesome uh, horsepower for this boat. The max horsepower on the 175 model is 150. By far, I would say 90% of our customers choose either 115s or 140s, uh, with the, the rest being a 150 horse option. If they're gonna do water sports, tubing, skiing, they want the best all out performance, that's where the 150 is um, beneficial. But the 115, 140 is a great option for most customers. Um, back here, anything 150 or less, we typically, We'll put an aluminum prop on. There is options for stainless steel, but uh, you don't gain nearly as much performance as you do on the larger horsepowers. So aluminum is a cost, more cost-effective option and does well for 95% of our customers. Um, at the back of the boat, a couple things too. This customer decided to go with a Hummingbird electronic system. So we've got two transducers set up here. This large transducer is a side image transducer that shoots out both sides um, and gives you um, a large range out each side of the boat to look for structure and stuff like that. With these side image setups, because this transducer is so large, we install a second high speed transducer to help get 2D bottom readings when you're on plane and at higher speeds. Still getting the down image and the side image from the larger transducer when you're cruising around slow speed trying to find structure. Um, works out really well. We also mount them over on the port side of the boat, typically. Uh, again, this is customer dependent, but if they don't have a preference, we like to mount them on the port side um, because on the starboard side, there is a ladder and there's not some, nothing worse than using a ladder and uh, having your transducer be your step. And those things are far too expensive to break. So um, that's how we'll set them up. Now, if people want to do kickers or stuff like that, that can always change that. Now, I think that's a lot of the stuff on the outside of the boat. We're probably going to hop inside the boat and show you the compartment layout and some more of the electronics and uh, go from there. All right, in the boat, uh, this customer wanted a Minn Kota Altera. Uh, this is an 80 pound thrust. 
This is an iPilot Link system. So it is Ethernet networked with his Helix 9 and also his Helix 10 via an Ethernet switch underneath the console. Um, we'll show you that here a little bit later in the video. Uh, super nice trolling motor. We love these Alteras. The auto stone deploy is a great feature. Um, frees up the need to have to go to the front of the boat if you have, you know, a bunch of people in your boat or people that aren't familiar with how the system works. You're not having to get around and work around them to try and work the trolling motor. Um, awesome tool for out on the water. This has got a handheld remote along with a foot pedal. The foot pedal is stored in this compartment here. Uh, this customer chose for us to have the trolling motor hard mounted to the deck. Um, there is options for removable plates. The only problem is, is on a removable plate setup, um, all the cables, the cords and stuff need to be removable. So it's not as neat, clean, tidy, organized of a setup if you do a removable. Um, but if a customer wants that, we certainly will do that. Um, with this setup, we're able to hide all the cords underneath the deck. You don't have any extra stuff laying on this surface up here that you can catch or, or anything like that. Like I said, this customer chose a Helix 9 for the front. Um, this is a mega down image unit that works with the trolling motor transducer that's built into this unit. Uh, we mount these on Cisco mounts, which are super solid, super sturdy. They don't fall um, in rough water. Fully adjustable, so you can lift this up, swivel it, you can also tilt it front to back and remove it with these two thumb screws and it's a completely flat plate. So there's nothing that pokes on your travel covers or, or causes anything up there. Uh, nice low profile setup. Um, we've got the trolling motor plug here. All of these Alumacraft bolts are pre-wired for trolling motors. Um, this has got a good Marinco 70 amp trolling motor plug. So nice heavy duty. Um, no issues there with either a 24 volt or a 36 volt setup. This is a 24 volt trolling motor here. Um, electronics goes, that's about it up at the bow. You do have a courtesy light here. There's also one in the rear of the boat. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, storage layout. So you've got a storage compartment here. And then on the opposite, opposite side is the exact same storage compartment. Um, in front of the passenger console on the port side of the boat, there is a live well. There's also another live well in the rear. Again, we'll get there um, eventually. And then in this compartment here is a storage compartment. And on the FSX model, this is where the battery charger is mounted. This customer opted for a Pro Mariner 20 amp three bank charger. So we're charging both the trolling motor batteries as well as the starting battery. Very important now with all the electrical draws in these boats from two locators, from an ethernet switch. Um, people are using their trolling motors more now than they used to as far as trolling needs and stuff like that. So they're not running their large engine as much and having that battery charged up when you get back home is really important. So we suggest three banks depending on the setup um, or even four banks if you do a 36 volt system but that allows you to make sure that when you go out fishing that all of your batteries are fully charged. Open now is the center rod locker. This has space for eight rods and reels. The top four compartments hold eight foot rods and reels and the bottom holds seven and a half foot. It's got, um, underneath your rod locker is your trolling motor battery storage. Uh, those hold up to a group 31 battery. This customer opted to go with group 31 interstate deep cycles. Uh, we sell interstate batteries. We do have some options for lithium, but by far uh, lead acid is still the most common thing that we install. Over on the passenger console, uh, very basic console design. It has a very nice glove box for storage that is lockable. There's a cup holder over there as well. Below the console, you've got your speakers. This comes factory installed with a radio. It's Bluetooth, it's AMF, it's got two speakers. There is speaker upgrades. Most customers just go with the normal speakers, but there is upgrade options available. Um, also above the speaker there, you'll see the open close drain valves for the live well. That's for the front live well. There is a separate valve for the live well in the back. No more having to reach in for plugs or anything like that. Over here at the driver's console, we have uh, your inputs for your radio. It's again, Bluetooth, AM, FM. Um, there's a USB port and an auxiliary input 
input there. Um, on the console, you've got gauges. These are the standard gauge package. There is some options where you can flush mount locators in here up to a seven inch screen. Again, the standard gauges are by far our most popular option. Uh, you've got miles per hour, you've got your fuel gauge. This one, because it has a Suzuki on it, has the pre-rig for the Suzuki warning gauge that tells you uh, a general check engine light, an overheat light, an oil pressure light, also an oil change reminder, which is another nice thing about the Suzuki's, and then an over rev light. Um, the far right gauge here is your engine RPMs and then also your starting battery voltage. Um, this customer opted for a Helix 10. This is a mega side image unit. Those transducers are at the back of the boat. Uh, we mount this particular one with this console on a Ram swing arm mount. Again, another very sturdy mount. Uh, it's a cost effective mount and uh, gives you a lot of flexibility as far as fitting into this console and, and having as much visibility as possible. Um, underneath your locator, you've got a master power switch. You've also got your navigation lights uh, and your anchor light your interior lights along with your live well lights. Both lights have LED live wells in them. Uh, accessory switch, which on this boat powers the front locator. And then it also will power the Minn Kota heading sensor, which is right here. This gets you your expansion on your iPilot features. So the jog feature, as well as a couple other things. Um, bilge pump, which is either on or off. This one does not have an automatic bilge, uh, another option, and then Aerator pump, either manual, off, or auto. Auto is on a timer, so it will shut on and off uh, automatically. Horn, and then your Infinity stereo system. Like I said, Bluetooth, AM, FM, it's got a color screen on it, super nice radio. Uh, your standard Suzuki control box, you've got your key switch, your throttle lever, lever uh, very standard setup here. And then you also have comforts of a tilt steering wheel, sliding driver's seat, and an air ride adjustable driver's seat. We forgot to mention in the last video, so we'll just throw some pictures up of it, but uh, under each console, there is a pull-out drawer. And then also we took a picture of the Hummingbird Ethernet 5 port switch. That's what links the Hummingbird and the Minn Kota systems together. So uh, continuing on of the tour here, we've got more rod storage over in the starboard or driver's side of the boat. This will hold five rods. There's also tubes in here. These are eight foot rod um, capable. Big selling feature of this boat is the jump seat storage and jump seat options. So you flip these guys up, you've got a nice full jump seat, um, even comfortable for full size adults. These are the nicest jump seats in any Alumacraft boat, in my opinion. Um, underneath this jump seat, you've got access to your live well. In the center compartment is your other access to your live well. So the nice thing about this FSX is you don't have to lift your jump seat up to be able to get into the live well. Uh, they've added this middle compartment here. Back on the rear deck here, you've got cup holders, you've got grab handles for the passengers. Uh, there is a space here for a pedestal seat as well as a ski toe pylon um, option. So it comes with the hardware here, you just need to buy the pole if you choose to do that. That is an optional accessory. Under this jump seat, I should say, you've got your starting battery compartment. So on this compartment, we um, do again, interstate batteries. We've upsized this to a group 27 starting battery, again, due to the electrical draws that these modern bolts have having a nine and a 10 inch screen. Uh, this just gives you a lot more reserve capacity. So to try and ensure that you don't have a no start situation when you're on the water. Uh, there is small amount of storage in this, um, not a ton. This is also where we would option in the fuel water separator just to help prevent any fuel related issues for the mover. In here, you've got another storage compartment. This is just general storage and then this is a nice feature in this boat as well. This is an insulated cooler. So um, you can use this a couple different ways. It is insulated, so it does keep your drinks cool. Um, and then also it does have a gasket on it and it's a line compartment. So this would be the driest compartment in the boat if you weren't gonna use it for a cooler. Um, these FSX models all come with three pedestal seats. Two passenger seats can be moved to any of the bases in the boat. 
the driver's post is fixed. The driver's post again has a slider and an air ride up and down function to it. Uh, another uh, unique feature of the FSX is there is a couple rod tubes in the side of the boat here. This is more of a stow and go rod storage. So you can slide the rods into the tubes and then just hang the ends of the rods over here. So if you're jumping from spot to spot, you don't have to bury them in the compartments. All right, also the FSX model comes standard with these kind of C-deck um, pads back here. So if you are getting in and out of the boat, it is a nice place to kneel or a little bit more comfortable spot. These are removable for cleaning and, and stuff like that. Uh, this is your second open close drain valve for the rear live well. And then fuel tank fill is in the port or passenger side corner of the boat. Uh, this is a 34 gallon tank. So uh, with these fuel efficient four strokes, you can go for a long time on 34 gallons of fuel. Back doing a couple more engine things here. So this boat comes standard with hydraulic steering. So uh, very smooth steering system. It's not a powered system, but it is a traditional hydraulic system and that allows you um, to put, again, up to 150 horse motor on them. This boat is also equipped with a custom cover from our friend Mike at Grumpy's Custom Covers. Um, it's a snap ratchet design. Uh, he puts a snap every 30 inches, and then there's a drawstring with ratchets that once you've got the cover completely installed, you cinch those tight at the back. It's a full travel cover, very heavy duty, very high quality. The nice thing about his custom covers is he has the ability to go over the top of a bow mounted trolling motor. So there is really no need to have to take your trolling motor on and off every time. He can also do a couple different colors, which is nice depending on the scheme of the boat. This customer being a silver hull opted for a gray cover, uh, but there is black options as well. This wraps up our overview of the 2024 Competitor 175 FSX. Uh, we hope you liked it. This is our first uh, dabble into YouTube videos, so bear with us. We'll get better as we do these. Uh, if you have any questions, comment below. Otherwise, if you like what you saw, um, like, subscribe to our page, and we'll try and continue these videos as much as possible. Again, my name is Nick. I'm with Durantel Sales and Service here in St. Peter, Minnesota. We're a family owned and operated business for three generations now. And uh, if you need to get a hold of us, you can either send us a message on here, um, give us a call 507 931 1363. Check out our Facebook and Instagram pages as well. And uh, thanks for your time.